hey it's the empire don't forget to hit the like button the subscribe button and the bell icon for more videos be taking over let's go champ hit that like button hit that subscribe button right now let's go hey it's the empire geo boxing empire boxer boxing now nah, man the phenom the guy that everyone's talking about man jaron in this man just completely dominated and showboated and st styled on juan carlos Abreu. And that fight was shocking, man. It was shocking. It, and it's wild because I didn't know too much about the guy before the fight. But, man, the record is insane, man. This guy has, he's basically a knockout artist. You know, when you're, uh, you, you got so many knockouts in your record, you got less than a handful of fights that went to, you know, the distance. You're basically a knockout artist. This guy has 26 wins and 24 knockouts, right? And the thing with this kind of fighter is, you know, He's the kind of fighter who masquerades as a counter puncher, but really he's a power puncher because when he's knocking guys out, it's one hit or quitters. And the welterweight division, man, is pit on notice, man, for sure. Um, no one's really talking about it right now. I haven't heard Errol Spence say anything about it. I haven't heard Terrence Crawford say anything about it. I haven't heard Manny Pacquiao Pac say anything about it. But this guy's a phenomenal fighter. And, you know, um, I remember I heard Sean Porter say one time that, you know, you, is, there's a such thing as looking too good in the ring. And Ennis looked so good in that destruction um, <laughs> two days ago that he's gonna have to campaign a higher weight class or a lower weight class and fight in, in, in fight. He's gonna have to fight in multiple weight classes to get uh, the names he wants to elevate his career. Um, a lot of elite level fighters do it um, if you're being avoided. And Darren Ennis, the way he dominated, man, yeah, he's gonna have to definitely campaign at a higher weight class just to get higher in the ranks at 147 for sure. I don't see anyone uh, trying to fight this kid anytime soon. Uh, not only is he a phenomenal counter puncher, not only is he defensively sound, but the guy, he's a one-hitter quitter knockout artist. You know what I mean? Uh, this guy, I mean, it, oh yeah, and he fights the softball and orthodox. He can switch back and forth. So this guy, this guy's dangerous, man. This guy's really dangerous, man. Um, and it's, I'm really high on that guy. You know, he reminds me of a Terrence Crawford, but a much more athletic Terrence Crawford, a much more defensively sound Terrence Crawford, and he hits a lot harder th than Terrence Crawford. I understand that. Terrence Crawford is a, a four-division world champion, or three-division world champion, or something like that. Three or four-division world champion. And Crawford, th his welterweight division is not his natural weight class. Jaren Ennis is a natural welterweight. And, you know, a lot of times, I keep trying to tell people that sometimes you can be a better fighter, but you're just too small. Right, Terrence Crawford. A lot of re people, there were a lot of reason, a lot of reasons why people were leaning toward Errol Spence Jr. on Terrence Crawford, is not because of the skill. It's mostly because of the size. Um, Errol Spence Jr. If he was fighting a Terrence Crawford that was his size, it would be a much different fight. But that's not the case at all. And Jaron Ennis, he's so big, and he's so strong. He looks like a natural welterweight because he is a natural welterweight. The guy's young. He's only 23 years old, and you know it looks like the sky's the limit for the kid. Um, so yeah, man, we're gonna see um, how Ennis's career goes from here. Um, I, like I said earlier, I, I'd love to see him fight at 154 or uh, 140 just to get some big names on his uh, record because I just don't see anyone um, fighting him at his own weight class. And the thing is, if you're a 145 and you want to fight Ennis, you it's a good thing because you want to drain him. If he's a natural 147 fighter and you can make him come down in weight, you got a chance to win, right? And if you're a 154 guy, you're like, okay, well, this guy is a small guy. He may be technical, but if I walk him down, I can beat him. So you're going to want that advantage. And like I said earlier, the only the only reason why you'd want him in the ring is if you drain him or you get him up in weight and you can bully him. So, you know, that's my opinion. If I were uh, directing Ennis, I would say, listen, fight a, a tough opposition and make sure he's smaller than you or bigger than you because that's the only way people are really going to fight you. Um, I just, like I said earlier, I just don't see anyone getting in the ring with him that's uh, elite at 147. A lot of the elite fighters at 147, they're getting a lot older, right? The Robert Ghost Guerreros, the Andre Bertos, you know, uh, a lot of the elite opposition, they're just a lot older fighters. And Ennis is so young, he's so fresh, he's so in his prime. Um, you know, it's going to be hard for any of these old lions to want to get in the ring with, with, a, with a young buck. So, yeah, man, <laughs> we're going to see how this whole thing plays out, man. Um, Ennis is looking great. I, I had pit him, like I said earlier, uh, I think he's I think he's ready for a title fight the way he looked last night. I mean, granted, it wasn't an incredible opponent, but he moved so quickly. You know, he's definitely the fastest mover in the welterweight division, you know, as far as uh, uh, 
uh, boxing goes. You know, I think Manny Pacquiao has quicker foot speed. I think he can move around in the ring quicker. But Jared Ennis actually could move around the ring with a purpose, right? He was actually dodging punches and looking around. He looked like it was crazy. Like um, when you compare him, people were saying he looked like Roy Jones Jr. yesterday. Uh, and, and, you know, he, he was so quick. He was so elusive. But it, I mean, he reminded me of uh, Pernell Whitaker, who actually countered. That was the difference. You know, the reason why Pernell Whitaker, you know, didn't give me knockouts as he could have, is because he'll dodge a punch, he'll look pretty, but he won't come back with anything. Jaren Ennis, he'll come back. He'll come back with a power punch. And that's what separates, you know, Jaren Ennis from a lot of uh, uh, people with amazing defense. Mostly people with amazing defense. They don't, they don't capitalize. So, yeah, man, we're going to see how this whole thing plays out with Ennis, man. I think I, I'm high on the guy, man. I think he's a superstar, and he just needs he just needs to be elevated right now at, at this point in his career. Um, maybe a couple tough fights. You guys let me know who he should fight. But, you know, like I said right now, all the elite-level oppositions at welterweight, they're getting older. You know, I doubt they want to get in a ring with someone like Ennis, you know. So, yeah, he's going to have to go up and weight or down and weight, um, in my opinion, to and, and stay at 147 at the same time just to get fights in. Um, let me know you guys feel about it, though. I thought I'd talk about Ennis, man. Everyone's talking about him. Everyone's comparing him to these uh, superstars. I think he should be part of that list. Does he have the experience? No, but as sometimes you don't need the experience, you can just you can pull it off, right? Look at Anthony Josser versus Vladimir Klitschko. A lot of people say it was too young, too this, too that, but he pulled it off. Um, a lot of times in boxing, the youth in itself can just overcome experience because you have you, you're when you're young, you think you're unstoppable. And that confidence could push you through a fight maybe you shouldn't have won. Let me know you guys feel about it though. Like, comment, subscribe. It's the Empire. Jewel Basket Empire. Empire. Jewel.